welcome again to Nature Revisited. I hope you enjoyed part one of Alice Skaya Sacred Landscapes. And thank you for joining us for part two, readings and music from Snow on Water. We will start with the reading of Green Apples, followed by the musical piece, Signet, then the reading of Starlings, followed by the Golden Frog, and finishing with the reading of Farewell to Tarwathi. I hope you enjoy. Green apples were past ripening on the ground. The blackbird had budded down in the reeds, and crickets had begun their evening song. A point of light over the trees dimmed and brightened as my brother and sister took another shot at the rim and the evening star rose over the clouds. The light wavered in the heavy air, first red, then green, then blue and gold. We turned together as it expanded into a disk, and in that instant, the treetops began to glow and the woods beneath lit up as if from a fire inside. Crackling and hissing, a great meteor was dragging a wave of sound and light straight towards us. Bursting onto the field with immense speed, ignoring fences and hedgerows, through the milkweed and mustard and butterfly weed, through cattails and reeds as if a piece of the sun had come falling to their burrow, to the possum and persimmon and the blackbird's nest, silencing frogs and owls, night jars and crickets, lighting the silver-sided barn and our faces in a flash of apple green, it burst in the air with a final crack. And in the pressing silence, we stood still as its pungent, heavy metal scent reached out to everything in the closing dark.
The evening wind came up strongly with the setting sun. One of those brief, brisk autumn fronts, wheeling in from the west that lifted our chimney cap straight off its seat. Bouncing and skidding on a roof until it dove down right outside our kitchen door, landing with a metallic clang and a thud. As I went out to retrieve him, across the darkening sky I could see a curious cloud on the horizon. It was slowly rising, fluid, like something crawling on the treetops. It climbed into the sky in spires and peaks, flattened into a mountain range, and sinking again became a wave washing over the landscape. And then I heard a faint refrain, a single note ringing out, like the rush of a flood across the fields. Ten thousand starlings winging through our valley, flying fast, straight for me. Moving like a torrent down the riverbed, they arrived at breakneck speed, swinging around trees, sweeping in like a living wind, whisking all around, high above, or whistling past the ground. In the rush of wings and song, I heard a metallic rustling. The scratch of wiry feet on the chimney. Within the crush and bustle of the flock, two tired yearlings taking a rest on the open pipe. They clutched and clambered across the room, just pausing a moment when the wind came up again. A cacophony of wings rattling down the walls all the way down, stopping at the flute. And another pitiful flutter as the second yearling tumbled down to the promise of clear sky farther out of reach. And then an odd rush as the legions stopped all at once. They lit in every tree disappearing into the limbs like leaves, lining the wires and the peaks on the mountainside, in the birches beside the house, in the pears and poplars, in the hemlocks and pines, above the stack of firewood and the ax set in the block. The air around the house was electric with 10,000 voices. They gathered and waited and watched, talking, telling, and retelling. I hurried to open the windows of the house, open the front door by the stove, remove the pieces of the top, clanging one at a time as the light of the setting sun entered through open windows to the firebox. Then turning the flue, opening it slowly, the path was clear beneath. A single soot-covered starling rustled down and then out and hopped up on an iron edge. He was quickly joined by the other. They paused there just long enough to blink. And buoyed by the voices of the throng, they leapt up, wings flailing at full speed, up and out through the open door, beneath the eaves and back into the light, into the pressing weight of the flock. In a stroke, the entire congregation fell still again, and a great hush settled over the den. Twenty thousand wings swept up every breath of air, an eclipse crossing the sun as every feather, foot, and wing released as quickly as they had come. Every wing and whistle a rushing wave, the house rolling with it like a boat and breakers bright with joy as there rose a single note. Above the purpling peaks, straight and true into the dark, they became the waking stars, the falling stars, bright as a strike of firelight.
Mushrooms are among the most populous life forms on the planet. Mycelium run underground through the soil for great distances, covering vast areas of fields and forests, amounting to a preponderance of the biomass of ecosystems. The mushrooms we're all familiar with are the mycelium's fruit. Without cell walls, countless nuclei branch into the stalks and gills and caps of a dusky treasure of the earth. Mushrooms are recyclers and a key player in the carbon cycle. And some are highly sought after for their medicinal qualities among native healers. A friend and I went out looking in Durango. The spruce and fir woods are as idyllic as anything I have ever known. The stones, the moss, the lichens and ferns, chiseled tree trunks and dappled light tease us into eternity. At more than a mile high above sea level, the day was bright and the mountain air was right. We had walked a long way in, and still there were no mushrooms. We had looked for miles and hadn't seen a single fruit. Then Julie said, sometimes they decide if you're all right before they show themselves. There was a long pause between us. Judy Collins sang an old sea shanty that touched me deeply when I first heard it. What is an unassuming song, adapted from another, written over a concertina and a pint of ale. Like the wake of a boat, its gently lilting melody is repetitive and hypnotic. And her tender reading, accompanied by songs of humpback whales, left an indelible mark on my heart. A spare song of innocence and loss. Farewell to Tarwathi speaks of leaving and separation. 
and the ambition that draws men down to the sea. Men who would survive the winter waves to watch the next generation grow up to new challenges with tender hands that would never know the splintering hemp ropes of whaling's harvest or the bark of its harpoon. It preceded the Great Depression and two world wars and foreshadowed the resignation of our fathers and grandfathers who would endure the trials of another sea stained red, snapped by the wind in waves, seeking the cold current drawing us homeward. It is a slow process. We all enter the sea knowing the risks. The context changes, the world becomes smaller, and we wake up from our bitter harvest. Sometimes that which serves us, informs and elevates us, is the casualty of our basest needs. Some of us miss the turning time. The sun was bright, the stones shined on, and the leaves above were backlit and green. My voice doesn't carry. A wisp of breeze could snuff it out, a chickadee could drown it. But on that crystal clear mountainside, I sang farewell to Tarawathi from my heart. Cloud shadow swept the valley and climbed the hills and carried the song aloft. Then a deep silence returned to the mountainside. The clouds cleared, the light beamed in, and a cuckoo called far away down slope. A change of fortune would carry us as we turned for home. There was no fanfare confetti or balloons. No one awaited our turnabout. No band would play for our turn. But in sunlight and in shadows, under stones and furrowed logs, beneath arcing ferns and roots, the fruiting moss and russet needles everywhere we had just walked, there were mushrooms. Mushrooms of every color, shape, and size. Chanterelles, porcinis, turkey tails, and inky caps. Amanitas, little brown mushrooms, and dusky puff balls. Colorful buttons in red and orange and yellow and white. A silent celebration of now. A parade of presents. A pain of hope. Beneath the waves of ferns, a message of forgiveness without resignation or judgment. Only love in its myriad form. Thank you for listening to Nature Revisited. All readings and music were written and performed by Alice Gaia. To learn more about his work, his readings, poetry, music, and photography, please visit snowonwater.com and brushanddrum.com. And as we celebrate the beginning of a new year, Nature Revisited would like to thank everyone who has joined us. And we hope you will continue to listen to and share Nature Revisited with family, friends, and colleagues. I hope you all join us for the next edition of Nature Revisited. And until then, do remember, we are nature.